A wife is the mistress of her husband's house. If she doesn't obey, it's a divorce. My husband Tom stole my black card and started spending money taking advantage of me, taking advantage of the fact that I am working, they are vacationing abroad. I can't stand being disrespected like this, I said, seething with anger. Of course you can, I said, seething with anger. And I brushed off his call and began to hatch my terrible plan for revenge. I'm Holly Smith, once the biggest star in the United States, a former actress who dazzled the world. I even made it to Hollywood, charming men around the world and making headlines overseas. My fame was truly overwhelming. I left the limelight when I married Tom. He was my former manager and assistant. He skillfully supported my career in the world, handling everything from my health to my personal life. He is still helping me in my current business endeavors. We now run several fashion stores together. I left the world 10 years ago at the age of 21. My decision to retire at the height of my fame caused a huge media backlash. Stubborn fans even showed up at my door. I was flooded daily with fan mail begging me not to leave and my departure even caused a public uproar. Despite the many unfounded rumors and tabloid stories, Tom and I married in complete happiness. Everyone around us supported us. Just before I retired, I launched my fashion brand and now Tom works for me. He handles the finances and I thrive as an astute businesswoman, propelling our models to success. Our life seemed idyllic, but lately Tom has been acting strangely. At home he constantly sighs in exhaustion and looks at me like I'm defeated. Tom, what's the matter? You seem depressed. Did something happen at the office? I knew he tended to keep things to himself, so in the moments we were together, I checked on him often. He doesn't like to openly share problems, always waiting for me to intuitively intervene. Although it can be exhausting, I never regretted it because he dealt with my difficult problems as well. My gratitude has always taken precedence over irritation. You know, I'm tired of being a crony, always doing what you say, he said suddenly, taking me by surprise. What's all this about? You've never said anything like that? Tom often bombarded me with his words. It was a sign that his frustration was misdirected. Tom starts saying things like that when he's swamped with work. He acts tough at work, so he probably has nowhere else to vent his irritation. I remember taking it out on him many times when I was an actress, so I understand how he feels. But still, his unexpected words shook me and I found my voice shaking. I've been holding back. Holly's always busy and I'm just being supported. Tom may earn more than the average person, but he's still just an employee at our company. I earn more than him, but I never thought it mattered who earned more in a marriage. His words were a shock to me. Even when you come home, you're all about work, hardly paying any attention to me. When we go shopping, you just buy whatever you want. How do you think I feel watching that? Despite appearances, I've been really patient, you know. Why can't you be more considerate? Tom looked at me with dissatisfaction, his lips pursed like a spoiled child. Frankly, his words irritated me. Our household is almost entirely supported by my income. His salary is his to use as he pleases. As I told him, it's my way of thanking him for all the trouble he's gone through and the support he's given me. There were times when he supported me financially during our poorer days. I wanted to repay him for all the times he sacrificed his personal time for me, right up until the day I retired. It hurts to hear such ungrateful words. The clothes and accessories I buy are from the savings I manage. If anything, I'm the one making sacrifices. This thought sparked anger in me. Holly, you're too free. I want more time off, and I want to travel leisurely. The salary's good since joining the company, but there's just no time. I left showbiz and joined your company to support you, Holly. Don't I deserve more gratitude? Stop prioritizing your own time and give me a break. When I retired, he stayed in showbiz, saying he'd continue being a manager. But once my business took off, Tom changed his tune, wanting to support me if I join the company and stay by your side. Holly, you won't be lonely. I want to be there for you. I wanted to spend time with him, so I let him join. I never asked him to, so why am I being treated this way? Is this life still not enough? Isn't he being too selfish? As I thought this, Tom made a suggestion, as if to add insult to injury. That's it. My parents' 60th is coming up. Can I get some time off for a celebration? That's all I ask. I won't be selfish anymore, but I want two weeks off. I want to take them on a trip to Japan. They've never been and I want to show them the tasty food and beautiful sights. I braced myself for what he might say, but his unexpected request made me blink and I felt something off. Two weeks off is nothing big, something he could easily request at work without making such a fuss. Our company is known for being fair. 
No one would begrudge a leave request, and we're well equipped to handle someone's absence. Yet he makes a scene and negotiates directly with me. Something's not right, but these are just suspicions, nothing concrete. I tried to calm my irritation and responded coolly. I'm okay with that, but I can't make it this year. There's a crucial fashion show for the models in my agency. And I also need to prepare for the Paris collection. My schedule just doesn't align. Can you ask if next year would work? I can adjust my schedule then. As a daughter-in-law, it's expected of me to attend my in-law's 60th birthday celebration. However, our company has two big events lined up this year, leaving no room for personal travel. I tried to negotiate a different date, but Tom refused with a smile. It's fine. We'll just have it with my side of the family. I want to spend some quality family time. Being the accountant, my absence for a week won't really disrupt work, right? Tom's words about wanting to spend time just with his family hurt me deeply. His insinuation that I was a nuisance pierced deep into my heart. So how about it? I deserve some free time too, right? Tom always had a way of speaking without thinking. He's harmless, but sometimes thoughtless. It's one of his flaws, but I chose him as my life partner, knowing no one is perfect. Still, I can't accept how he's speaking to me now. Even if he doesn't mean it, why do I have to be spoken to like this? Doesn't he care about me? Hey, Holly, you listening to me? I owe a lot to Tom's parents. Although I can't often visit due to work, they always treat me like their own child and praise my work. We're so happy to have such a wonderful daughter, his mother had said when I married into the family, and his father celebrated our marriage with joy. It's their 60th celebration. I understand wanting to celebrate it this year, but how can I agree happily after being spoken to like that? It doesn't matter to me. Take one week or two. Do as you like. I couldn't hold back my anger and showed it openly. This probably triggered Tom. He stood up, visibly upset, and left the living room without a word. We've been sleeping in separate bedrooms due to work, and from that day until his trip, we didn't see each other at all. Is that really true? Isn't your husband being too harsh? My secretary, noticing my unusual demeanor the day Tom left for his trip, pressed me for details. She's an exceptional talent and has been supporting me since I started managing the company. As women, we often see eye to eye, and sometimes she's even more reliable than my husband. She's quick-witted, yet caring, always there to support me when I'm down or about to make a mistake. I cherish her like family. She admires me like a real sister, and I often confide in her. Her honest and mature advice beyond her years is always valuable, and this time, too, she noticed something was off about me and kindly showed concern. I hesitated at first about opening up, but realized keeping it in could affect my work. I decided to tell her everything that happened up to today. She furrowed her brow in anger. If I were you, I'd have given him a piece of my mind. You've been too soft on your husband, boss. I get that you love him, but you can't let him walk all over you. Her blunt advice, making me wonder who's older, hit me hard. In an environment where everyone tends to hold back from telling me things, she's the only one who treats me as an equal. This freshness and comfort are something I really value. Being in a higher position often means more humility and restraint, and someone who can confront me head-on like her is truly precious. You're right. What should I do? You can call him, right? Why not talk after work today? Don't worry about spoiling his trip. If things keep going like this, you might be headed for divorce. She pressed the point like an older sister, leaving me with no response but to agree. As she suggested, I decided to call him right after work. He's in Japan. There's about a 15-hour time difference from the U.S. For instance, if it's 5 p.m. here, it's 8 a.m. there. It's about the time they would finish their breakfast. I had sent him an email in advance to let him know I needed to talk, so he should be expecting my call. I called, thinking he'd surely answer, but there was no sign of him picking up. Maybe he's still enjoying himself with everyone. I'll try calling again later. I tried calling every 30 minutes, but still no answer. Worried, I contacted my mother-in-law to check on him. Hello, Holly. You must be tired. I'm sorry we went on this trip without you. We told Tom we'd prefer you to be with us, but he insisted. I knew from Tom that his mother used to be a strict educator, but now she's much softer and always shows concern for my busy life. Never mind, we're so busy at the company this year I couldn't make time. I'll definitely make it up to you next year, okay? Oh, don't worry about it. Just having this wonderful trip as a gift from you is more than enough for us. Her kind words, like smiling, struck me as odd. Wait, a gift? I asked, puzzled by the unfamiliar term. She seemed surprised by my question while expressing surprise. They explained the situation to me. Oh, isn't it? 
Tom told us this trip was fully paid for by you since you couldn't join. What I couldn't help but shout in surprise over the phone. My mother-in-law realized I didn't know anything from my reaction. She hurriedly connected her words. Isn't this the trip Holly arranged? Tom paid for everything with Holly's card, so I thought it was from you. The trip included Tom's parents and his sister's family, five people in total. The flight alone cost about $1,000 per person minimum, including other expenses. It easily exceeded $10,000. It's outrageous to use such a large amount without consulting me, especially since I usually cover living expenses. Tom doesn't gamble or smoke, so his salary should be intact. He definitely earns enough to afford such expenses, yet he didn't. With him not answering my calls, my anger started boiling. My mother-in-law, noticing my state, spoke with concern. Holly, are you okay? We'll pay back every penny. Tom insisted on covering everything, which seemed odd. My husband and I decided to pay you back later. We miss you and plan to visit you. This trip might be based on a terrible plan. Thinking so, my mother-in-law continued to comfort me. You're not at fault. It's also your 60th celebration, so please use that money for your enjoyment. I'll definitely get Tom to pay for it. But could you tell me more about the trip's planning? I was wondering what Tom was up to. I realized this trip must have been carefully planned months ago. Tom was using me without my knowledge. At that moment, I started to suspect him. Then, my mother-in-law shared a shocking truth. The trip was actually proposed by Tom's sister and her husband. To my surprise, it was Tom's sister and her husband, who always criticized me, who initiated the trip. Tom's brother-in-law, an executive at my rival company, he looked down on me for being a female CEO. Due to her high pride, Tom never stood up to his sister. The sight of such a Tom, perking up to someone other than myself, caught my sister-in-law's eye. Even though she's always led Tom by the nose, I couldn't stand the fact that she's offended by just a slightly nice look from Tom. With their strong sense of rivalry, my sister-in-law and her husband disliked me, and I tried my best to avoid dealing with those two as much as possible. The couple, always competitive and disliking me, planned this trip, possibly persuading Tom to pick a fight and exclude me. They waited for the right moment to bring Tom along as a cash cow. I'm so sorry, I didn't know anything. Tom told me you were busy and asked us not to contact you directly. If my unaware in-laws and I were to communicate, it would reveal the plan, potentially causing a rift in our marriage. To prevent this, Tom had to restrict his parents' actions in advance. And for my in-laws, who didn't understand how busy I was, Tom's advice was absolute. They decided to follow his words and express their gratitude when they returned. Holly, did you give Tom a card or something? He was paying with a black card I've never seen before. What my father-in-law must have been listening in, given his hasty tone, he asked me a question that had been on my mind. The moment he mentioned a black card, I checked my safe. The black card he referred to was the company's vital black card. It's an important card used by our company, accessible only by Tom and me, who knew the safe's password. I never thought Tom would commit such embezzlement, but the card that should have been there was missing. Tom, being in charge of finance, could easily manipulate records. He was misusing company funds. Realizing this, my anger peaked and I shared the story with my in-laws. They must have been shocked going pale. My mother-in-law became panicked. What should we do? Are we complicit in this embezzlement? We'll return with Tom immediately. We're as guilty as he is, even unknowingly. We'll accept our punishment once we're back. My father-in-law, a man of strong responsibility, said. I shook my head, refusing his words. It was all engineered by Tom's sister's family and Tom. My in-laws weren't to blame. No need for that. You were just manipulated by Tom. You're not at fault, but I can't let them off the hook. We don't need punishment, but could you help me with something? I've turned a blind eye to Tom's actions until now. That's my fault. He's taking me for granted, thinking he can get away with just an apology. This isn't just a marital issue. It's a company issue. We need to teach him a lesson. All right, we'll do whatever we can to help. So we started plotting a revenge plan. I was surprised by my own cunning, but my love for Tom had died. Now only hatred and anger were surging through me. Initially, my in-laws were hesitant about this horrible plan, but they also have Tom's responsibilities as parents. And finally, they resolved themselves. As parents, they agreed to be my allies. Amidst this meeting, Tom unexpectedly called. I ended the call with my in-laws and answered Tom's. What's up? We're enjoying a family-only trip, so what's this important talk about? 
Tom's sarcastic tone only fueled my irritation. You took your time calling. Did you go a little wild, huh? No way, just having drinks at a nearby bar with mom and dad. This confirmed he was lying. I had just spoken to his parents and there was no noisy bar sound in the background. Besides, they had no reason to lie to me. He was probably out causing a ruckus with his sister's family. His words erasing all the time and relationship we had built cooled my feelings entirely. Oh, really? By the way, Tom, you haven't been doing anything with the company's expenses, have you? His demeanor changed instantly at my unexpected question. What's that all about? His tone, usually lighthearted, became dead serious. Was this his true nature, seeing his attitude shift as if he now saw me as an enemy? I faced him with equal firmness. Just checking? Since there will be an audit at the company soon, are you suspecting me? His defensive reaction showed his guilt. I couldn't help but laugh at his poor response. What's wrong? I was just concerned. And you're talking about suspicion? Did you do something wrong? No, anyway, the house isn't a mess when I get back, right? Realizing he was digging himself deeper, he suddenly changed the subject. His actions only made him look more suspicious. I was almost impressed by his foolishness. Who knows? I've been busy with work, too. Give me a break. I hate coming back to a dirty house with bugs. A wife is her husband's maid. Disobey, and it's divorce. Even our executive says that to his wife. Looks like I might have to do the same, right? You wouldn't want that, so keep the house clean. I had never seen him getting along with the executive. His current words were probably all his own thoughts, but aware of his weaker position, he used the third person to express them. His patheticness made me sigh. Sure, I'll keep that in mind. There was no need to talk to him any longer. Tom clearly looked down on me, even embezzling company funds. Embezzlement is a serious crime, and I could take him to the police. No mercy, even for a spouse. But that alone wouldn't satisfy me. After ending the call with Tom, I immediately phoned a certain place. The next day, while busy preparing for the fashion show, I was bombarded with calls. Of course, it was Tom. I noticed his calls late at night while I was out for a reason, accompanied by my secretary. Luckily, she was driving, so I answered Tom's call. You're late. What have you been doing? His voice was rougher than I'd ever heard, surprising both my secretary and me, who were listening on speaker. What do you mean I was working? Did you do something yesterday? Do something like what? Don't play D. Tell me the truth. What did you do? Tom was in complete panic, and in the background I could hear several Japanese men confronting him along with my sister-in-law and her husband. Sounds noisy. Something wrong? No, it's just... Uh... Tom, who had been blustering, suddenly began to stammer. He realized that admitting anything would put him in a very disadvantageous position. His odd behavior made me explain to him what was coming. Time to give him a taste of despair. Too bad, Tom. You were supposed to be having a blast in Japan, but it seems your dream turned into a nightmare overnight, huh? But it's what you deserve for misusing someone else's money. You did something, didn't you? As he reacted weirdly, I revealed what I had done the day before. I had contacted the president of the credit card company I was contracted with. Despite being after hours, he agreed to help me due to our long-standing relationship. He immediately suspended the company's credit card. If a credit card is misused, the company doesn't have to pay the store, leaving the store at a loss. However, Tom had arranged to pay the entire bill at checkout, so with the card blocked, he couldn't pay and was now being interrogated by the hotel receptionists. Tom, Mom, and Dad have already checked out. The taxi I reserved for them left with them, so there's no one coming to pick you up. My sister-in-law, who was cornered, bombarded Tom, asking what to do next. Hearing this, Tom panicked even more and directed his anger at me. How can you do this and think it's okay? You ready for a divorce? Go ahead. I'd rather not have a husband who embezzles company funds. I've already spoken to a lawyer, and we're moving forward with divorce proceedings. What Tom was visibly shaken by my unflappable demeanor. I've overlooked so much of what you've done, Tom. There was a time when you supported my work and I was grateful. But I've reached my limit. My patience is exhausted. That... that can't be... Realizing he was in an absolute crisis, Tom finally understood my fury and let out a pitiful cry. The receptionist relentlessly demanded payment from Tom and his group, who were now cornered in despair. Bear in mind, none of them could speak Japanese. Relying on a guide for communication, listening to their situation, I suggested switching the call to me. No one there speaks Japanese, right? Let me talk to them for you. You're going to help gladly? Tom must have thought I had a change of heart. Realizing his mistake without hesitation, he handed his phone to them. 
I explained the situation to the receptionists in Japanese and they quickly grasped it, seeming quite cooperative. To ease their worries, I also gave them my contact information, which my secretary noted down. They happily agreed to my proposal. After a friendly chat, they returned the phone to Tom. What happened? Did you sort it out? Yes, I've taken care of it. Now it's up to you guys, really. You're a lifesaver, Holly. I love you. He then hurried off, apparently called by the receptionist. Tom, clueless, ended the call and followed them. Are you sure about this? It probably won't end well. Perfect, right? It's ideal for them to see hell. An hour later, as expected, I received a barrage of calls again from Tom. When I answered the call, Tom was on the line, his voice filled with pitiful anguish. Holly, what's going on here? What is this place? Crying out, he showed me via video call the image of a slum area in Osaka, Japan, the image of Skid Rows. Tom and his sister's family were stripped of their belongings and in a pitiful state, caught by those guys being taken to what's considered the most dangerous place in Japan. It was honestly unexpected. When I was talking to the receptionist, he said, I was a big fan of you. I'll prepare a harsh punishment. Just leave it to me. But I never expected it would be this place. I laughed out loud at the unexpected location. Lucky you're still alive in Japan's most dangerous place. It's a miracle, really. What? Wait, Holly, what's this about? Explain yourself and come help us right now. Since it's a video call, they can probably hear everything clearly. Behind them, many homeless people were surrounding Tom and his group, causing a commotion. You guys were causing trouble for Holly. You reap what you sow. Time for reflection, added my in-laws, joining the call, surprising her. Mom, Dad, what are you doing? A friend of Holly flew us back in a private jet. We returned to the U.S. and Holly picked us up. We realized you were trying to set Holly up. We asked her to do as she pleases with you guys. As they said this, the onlookers behind them started confronting Tom's sister and her husband. The people living in Skid Row are ruthless. If you wear anything valuable, even women are not spared. They were raising their voices while making a video call. In such a dangerous neighborhood, it's no surprise they became perfect targets. I addressed the crowd in Japanese, loud enough for them to hear, telling them these men were using my card illegally and treating me horribly. Every night, I encouraged them to do as they pleased with them. The locals, getting into the spirit, eagerly agreed to give them a hard time. Suddenly, the call ended, perhaps because someone snatched the phone afterward. Tom and his group lived in the skid row, terrorized daily, and used like slaves by the locals. Without money to return to the U.S., they were essentially trapped abroad. I confirmed the subsequent events with the hotel reception. Apparently, an acquaintance of the receptionist is a boss in the skid row, and he agreed to take care of Tom and his group in exchange for me treating him to some good liquor next time, assuring me not to worry. The deal was made under the condition that they would be protected from life-threatening situations. In return, I agreed to sing at that hotel, something I hadn't done in a long time. Your live performance video was the only one you ever released when you were active. It's still my treasure. As thanks, come stay at our hotel and sing for us. I'll tell the manager to give you VIP treatment. Following this, I successfully got my revenge on Tom and his group with the help of the men from the hotel. I also managed to divorce Tom. I felt refreshed and have been enjoying life with my in-laws. Tom's sister and her husband were fired for unexcused absences from work. Their phones were taken by the locals, leaving them without a way to contact anyone. My in-laws explained the situation well, so it didn't become a police matter and no one seemed to care about them. Thus my ties with Tom were completely severed. Since then, I've been focusing on work and living a happy life. Occasionally, I call the receptionist to check on Tom and his group. They're still living in hellish conditions, but I don't feel sorry for them. I ask to spare their lives, and I'm enjoying my life to the fullest.